So hey, I'm glad you clicked on to my video. My name is Kerry Martin. You're watching Off Grid 406. Listen, if you're thinking about buying a new wind generator, um, there's a lot of things that you need to consider. You know, one of them being uh, how big the generator should be, uh, what type of generator is, should I buy a vertical, should I buy a horizontal, um, you know, uh, should I mount it on my house, should I put it on a tower, uh, you know, how much wind do you have, those types of things, you know. We're going to talk about that right now. To start off with, you know, I wanted to, you know, I just Google searched uh, wind turbine, <clears throat> and I pulled up a whole bunch of these pictures of the all these different you know designs and manufacturers and makes and everything else and and so that's the first thing that we're going to start talking about here is the design of the wind generator now as you may already know there are two major types of wind generators there's a vertical and then there's a horizontal let's pull up a vertical real quick and we'll check it out this is uh actually a product that you can uh, get through Walmart of all places and you can order it and it'll send it to the store apparently. Now I'm going to tell you right away this thing's a hunk of junk. It's it's very gimmicky. $195 that looks very, you know, enticing and the idea is that these these uh, vertical wind generators can take dirty air if you were if you will non-laminar flow wind coming in from all different directions and they can use it and you know to a degree that is true. These can utilize air that's that's not laminar. Um, you know, on top of a roof of a house or something like that, or, or where there's a lot of bushes, there's a lot of shrubs, there's a lot of, uh, you know, um, obstructions that can hamper and, and create turbulent forces within the wind and stuff. <clears throat> These do pick up more, but I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, right here, they're claiming that this thing has 600 watts. This thing produces 600 watts of power. I can tell you that's ap an absolute exaggeration of what this thing, what you can expect from this thing. It's very cheaply made. The motor that resembles a ceiling fan, you know, which I'm sure does in fact generate, you know, 12 volt DC, but it's, it's very questionable how much this thing actually produces. And the people that I know that have purchased these have been very disappointed with their output. So, you know, you can, you can get kind of wrapped up in this vertical wind generator. A lot of people are really, really sold on this idea of the vertical wind generator. And in fact, uh, you know, a neighbor and a friend of mine actually told me he was thinking about getting one of these things. And I told him, well, I, I wouldn't really recommend it, you know, and it was kind of like his whole face drops, you know, and he, he was very disappointed to hear that. There's something very alluring about these things. I, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Uh, they're, they're very marketable. They have neat shapes and stuff, and they look like they would work really good. And, and you know, it's just kind of, I, I don't know what it really is that makes these things so good for the market but they're very popular. Obviously, there's a lot of manufacturers of people that are selling these things. And in my opinion, they're just not worth the money, you know, to spend on it. For one, you have a great big infrastructure of these blades that, you, you know, to get it any usable. If you know anything about wind, the higher up you get it, the better, better you are. Even though these tell you that they will work great in low wind and and turbulent wind and all these other things that there are the selling points of these wind generators. All right, so getting past that, what we want to really focus on is the horizontal wind generator because the horizontal wind generator is really what's on the commercial, you know, when you look at the big, the big uh, massive wind generators that are, you know, the, the, the wind farms, you know, how many vertical wind generators do you see? There are a couple of examples around the world but by and large, they're going to be all horizontal or HOT, H-A-W-T. It's an acronym for Horizontal Axis Wind Turbine. That's where the investors put their money because these things uh, are so much more efficient and, and they're so much more reliable um, in their operation. So, so which wind turbine to get? I've just pulled up a few that I have experience with. Uh, one of them is the Air X. This is the first one I ever had any kind of usable experience with. Now, this particular model, there's a lot of different models. This might actually be the Marine model, so they go for a little bit more. They have, you know, stainless steel parts and, and you know, the copper windings and stuff are epoxy coated and things like that to protect them from the Marine environment. They have double seals, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but these are small wind generators and you often see this, this very type on, you know, the back of sailboats and stuff like that. These don't expect a lot of power out of these. Their claims, uh, actually is 30 kilowatt hours of energy a month. 
that's one kilowatt hour per day. Now, if you break that down, let's say if it's blowing on and off all day long, this thing's creating anywhere from, you know, five watts to uh, probably peaks out at 300 watts during the day. For a battery bank that's small, that would be a useful thing to have if your battery bank is not very big because this is the one thing about off living off grid especially with batteries is that you know those batteries depending on how big the battery bank is they need uh, whatever charge is going into them needs to overcome the resistance that those batteries have and obviously the larger the battery bank the more resistance that they're going to have to to actually charging them it's, it's a chemical exchange is what it is. And in my battery bank, for example, I can hook up a one amp battery charger and it won't do nothing. I could leave it there indefinitely for the life of the batteries. And in fact, the batteries would probably lose charge. They probably wouldn't even gain charge. Uh, I could put a five amp battery charger on my batteries and maybe, maybe two solid weeks of that might bring them up to a, a charging voltage. My batteries don't even don't even notice that anything is on them according to my voltmeter i have a vo voltmeter that goes to the hundreds of volts and it doesn't even begin to notice anything until my wind generator puts out about 10 amps of power and at 10 amps the voltage begins to change and at 20 amps it begins it changes dramatically and, and that's the thing you know the larger the battery bank the more of a punch that you're going to need to charge that battery bank so the air x is a very good quality and they have larger ones too this is just a small example i would definitely recommend these they they are costly they do cost more than some of the a lot of the chinese uh, manufacturers have copied the air x because of of their great success and and quality over their years you know the air x has been known for their quality uh, the one I, that i have experience with was at least 15 years old still going strong zero problems during the entire life that it was being used. Very much, uh, very, very durable. So the other wind generator I have experience with, and I actually have quite a few videos that I've made of the Istabreeze itself. It's it's made in Turkey and it's, um, it's very high quality. In my opinion, um, if you look at this thing, the body of it is solid aluminum. It's got large cooling fins. It's very heavy, heavy duty. The, uh, the hub itself is, about three eighths of an inch thick, you know, where the blades themselves bolt to it. And mine actually, you know, I, I show in my videos that my mount actually broke right where actually my tower broke, excuse me. My tower actually broke in a high wind because I, I just didn't have it built strong enough. And the whole thing come toppling down. It broke the blades, but it didn't harm any part of the generator itself. Very robust, you know. I would I would give this a, a 10 out of a 10 for strength. Um, there was some issues. You guys are gonna wanna watch those videos. I'll put a link to, to one of them up here. Um, and if you guys are interested in these, they come in a lot of different uh, voltages and, and configurations. And they're just, they're great machines. You know, $480 for the wind generator itself. But if you watch my videos, you'll know that I spent a lot more than that, especially by the time you buy your tower. And that's something you really need to consider. You need to find a place to where you're gonna put this thing. They, they do take some room by the time you have to uh, factor in, you know, the tilt of the tower, unless you plan on climbing it, which I, I'm not too crazy about climbing 30 or 40 feet in the air or 50 or however high your tower is gonna be. I, I'm just not crazy about doing things like that to actually, you know, bring that thing up there and mount it and everything else. It's, it's ludicrous when you can very easily make a tower that just that just tilts down in the down position uh, where you can easily work on it. And, and I show you uh, exactly how to do that in my videos out of just regular plumbing pipe. These, these also have control boxes that you have to purchase. And right here, uh, right where it attaches to the pole itself, uh, there is there is an adapter that they will sell separate from the wind turbine. They won't tell you this, but there is an adapter that fits in the inch and a half pipe. You might want to purchase that. I made a modification on my pipe to where it, you know, I was able to use some muffler muffler clamps and squeeze it down over the wind generator itself. And then they have two little bolts that go through the side and lock it into place. So yes, Istabreeze, highly recommended. They have all different models here. They have the 2000 watt, they have a thousand watt. And I personally have the 15, the I-1500 and they make a small micro turbine. So we've talked about a few wind turbines that I would recommend. Uh, we've talked about the wind generator tower. It's, it's a very important thing. It's also gonna be part of your, your overall cost. 
uh, don't rule that part of it out. I mean, don't just look at the turbine and say, oh, 500 bucks. Um, yeah, and then that'll give me a thousand watts of extra power, just what I needed. Um, you know, you have to factor in the cost of the wire, the cost of the tower, uh, your bridge rectifier. I mean, there's a lot of components in between your generator and your house. You know, you got wires, you got guy wires, you got, uh, you know, cable clamps, a whole bunch of hardware. I got videos on that. You can check those out right here. And and so in, in all reality, you know, you're looking, you're looking at about three times the cost of the wind generator to get that thing put up and operable. And, you know, and, and so that's something else I want to talk about. <clears throat> You know, you have <clears throat> you have to be able to size these wind generators to be able to be effective, you know, to be able to effectively charge your system. And just remember that some of these claims that these wind generator manufacturers are making are 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 not true at all. I mean, the, the two that I mentioned, um, you know, uh, I would say are, are fairly accurate. But, you know, again, those figures you know, for the I-1000, the I-1500, or for the I-2000, those numbers <clears throat> are at their peak, their peak power output. And so that would be under uh, very high winds. And so my, my generator doesn't even kick on until the winds start blowing at about 14 or 15 miles an hour. There's just a slight bit, bit of cogging in the, in the turbine itself, and it takes a little bit to get the blades going. Once they're going, you know, it'll generate some juice. So just like just like solar panels, you know, the more the more area of solar panels that you have exposed to the sunlight, the more power you're going to expect to get. The same thing is true with wind generators. You're not going to get 2000 watts out of a little bitty blade like this. It's 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 an impossibility. It's a physical, you know, the physics aren't there. And, um, you know, there's a theoretical uh, amount of power that you can get for each diameter. Of blade, you know, every just remember every time you double the size of a blade, it quadruples the amount of available power that you can extract from the wind. Every time the wind speed doubles, it gives you um, a factor of eight times more energy available. You know, that's, that's just the laws of kinetic energy uh, at work here because that's all you're doing. You're just taking kinetic energy from the wind, you're converting it to rotational power. And there's a bunch of you know theoretical maximums on that and you know not a whole lot of wind generators can even reach those theoretical maximums you know the very well designed ones can get close to it but you know uh, there is no there is no magical wind generator out there that's able to just surpass all you know expectations you know there are there are set parameters in which which you can expect to 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 have these things perform at and I should probably mention one last thing too. These cheap Chinese wind turbines, you know, they've many of these cheap Chinese wind time, turbines. They'll mimic uh, the more uh, successful brands like the Airx and stuff like that. Um, you know, that's um, you know, there are some good Chinese-made stuff out there for a cheap price. You know, but the the problem is, is which one is good, and which one isn't. There's a um, there's a fellow YouTuber out there that uh, him and I, we, we kind of talk back and forth a little bit, and I would highly recommend his channel if you're thinking about getting a Chinese wind turbine, it's called Toys for Watts. He's, he's bought several of the Chinese versions and tested them out over several years, and he gives um, a pretty honest review on those things, uh, you know, quite frankly, and he tells you which ones to get and which ones not, and he posts videos all the time um, on the output of his wind generator. So, uh, might want to look into his channel as well. So with that said, you know, I'm going to sign out. If you don't mind, give my video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. You're going to want to see new videos that are coming up. My channel is about everything off grid. And so if that's your bag, subscribe. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.